Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a good old-fashioned makeup tutorial on this look that is on my face right now. And this is probably one of my favorite looks that I've done all year on my channel, which is quite something, especially considering this is a very, very simple look. Like, to be honest with you, there's really not much craziness going on, um, but there's just something about the simplicity of it and the impact that it gives that just gets me very excited. <laughs> Listen, the color of the eyeliner paired with this nude lip color specifically, this dark lip color that I'm going to be showing you guys with this look later on in the video is everything. It's perfection. It honestly takes the look to a whole nother level. And also a lot of the products that I'm going to be using today are actually old favorites of mine. So they're products that I used to talk about all the time, but for whatever reason, I kind of just stopped talking about them just because I just found new favorite products to talk about, but I felt bad and I wanted to bring them back into the spotlight. So I'm showcasing a lot of those today as well. By the way, if you enjoy just basic tutorials like I'm doing today, give this video a big thumbs up because it lets me know that I should do more of them. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. So starting off with a completely bare face, I've got nothing on right now, including skincare. So that means we need to prep. So first things first, I'm gonna go in with my Milk Makeup watermelon brightening serum. I actually completely forgot about how much I like this product. It is such a nice base for foundation. What I actually really like about this product is that it doesn't have a oily texture. Sometimes, especially if I am gonna be using a foundation that's already super hydrating, I don't wanna go in with moisturizing products that are like too intense or too over the top or too oily or too moisturizing because then my makeup is literally just gonna slowly drip down my face throughout the day, which is not what I want. So I still wanna keep my skin hydrated, but I don't want it to be super oily and this product kind of does that for me. So I do really like it for that but I do have some really, really dry parts of my face still that I kind of want to add an extra layer of protection over. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of like a thicker moisturizer. I'm going to use my Lano All Over Everywhere Multi Cream. This is a pretty thick cream. I don't really like to put this all over my face because it is a little bit on the thicker side, but I do like to put it on like the drier parts of my face. So on my chin and on my nose, kind of like on my T-zone. So this is a nice little dry skin hack for my dry skin people out there. So because my skin is nice and moist and prepared, I wanna go in with my foundation right away. So I'm gonna be going in with my Jose Moran Vibrancy. This is a product that I used to love and use all the time. This foundation is incredibly dewy, very, very hydrating. It's really good if you have very, very dry skin. If you have oily skin, would honestly probably stay farther away from this stuff. It may be a little bit too hydrating and dewy for you. I'm gonna be using the shade RG45 today. So what I like to do with all my foundations, I normally Normally just kind of dot it all over my face and then just pat it out. So here's what the finish of the foundation looks like. It's so gorgeous. That glow is so pretty. It's so funny because this foundation can go like one of two ways. Like I said, it can go really over the top and be super like sticky and emollient and just look almost too glowy. But if I use the right base, I feel like it just works so perfectly. Weird, it's almost like as if the texture of the foundation completely changes. Like this does not feel sticky at all. The glowiness is very controlled. That just goes to show that your base products make a huge, huge, huge difference in the way that your base is actually gonna look in the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and just finish off the base. So I'm gonna go in with my Milk Makeup Flex Concealer in Light. This is another product that I have quite a roller coaster of a relationship with. I initially tried this a couple years back and I hated this product. I think I even included this product in a 5S5 Worst Concealer as my least favorite concealer product. And then this year I tried the product again in a full face of milk video and I completely changed my mind about it. And I actually use it pretty often. I really, really like it. I feel like it has some really nice coverage and it looks really lightweight underneath the eyes and I just feel like it's a good go-to concealer. So to set everything in place, we're doing a major throwback. I'm gonna be using my RCMA No Color Powder. I want you guys to let me know in the comments if you've been around my channel during the RCMA No Color Powder phase because this was pretty much the only powder that I used for like a solid year, maybe even longer than that. Um, this was really, really popular on YouTube at one point. I think it was Kathleen Lights who really popularized this product. And it's just a really great basic no frills type of powder. It's really good for setting the makeup and it's also really good for baking. It's fairly inexpensive and it's just kind of one of those powders that 
just does the trick. It sets or it bakes your makeup, but without looking too heavy. It doesn't add any coverage, it doesn't add any color. It kind of just does what it needs to do, and then it goes away. So what I like to do, instead of dumping out the powder, making a huge mess, I'm just gonna kind of shake it. And then whatever powder is left over in the cap, I'm gonna grab that on my little brush. This is my Morphe E49. Tap off the excess and just use that to gently set underneath my eyes and the center of my face to cut any shine that may be coming out from that foundation. So now it is time to add some color to the face. Now this portion of the video is in partnership with Vesca. I'm very, very, very excited to be partnering up with this brand. It makes me honestly so happy and so proud to be able to support smaller brands. And this product is something that I was really, really impressed by. So for Vesca's first product, they released seven different bronzers. And what really impressed me again is the shade range for the bronzers. They really range from very, very light to deep and dark. And I feel like especially for bronzers, there really aren't a lot of brands out there who do have like a variety or a more extensive shade range for bronzer specifically. So I'm going to go through each of the seven shades so that you guys can get a good idea of what each one looks like. The lightest bronzer that they have in the collection is called Rio. This is great for those of you who have a very fair complexion. What's really nice about this shade too is that it does lean more neutral. It's not super yellow or super red, which can sometimes be a problem when you are very fair. It's really hard to find a bronzer that isn't going to make you look muddy. And this is a color that will not make you muddy because it's really nice and neutral. Then we have Santorini. This is another really nice neutral bronzer, really good for light to medium skin tones. This would be my shade. Then we have Diani. This is a medium bronzer with golden undertones. This would be great for those of you who have more of a medium skin tone. Then we have Maldives, which is a really rich bronzer with neutral undertones. Cabo is a really warm red based bronzer. Bali is a very deep bronzer with neutral undertones. And then Tahiti is another deep bronzer, but with warm red undertones. So those are all the shades. So now I'm going to go into my particular shade, which is Santorini. And I'm gonna take that on my 170 setting brush from Fenty. And I'm just gonna apply that in the places where I would normally bronze. So not only is there a huge variety of shades in this brand, but the formula for these powders are gorgeous. I just wanna show you guys. When I put my brush into the powder, no matter how hard I stab it, there's very little, if any, kickback. Bronzers that are too powdery or have too much kickback could just be a huge pain in the butt to apply to the face because you'll just over apply it and you'll just end up looking like you over applied your bronzer, which is not what you want. Your bronzer is meant to make you look sun kissed. The texture is really, really, really smooth and velvety. Like when you touch these powders, they almost feel like creams are so smooth. Because of the texture, because it's not super powdery, it is a nice buildable formula. So you can get it to whatever intensity you want. So now I'm gonna apply some color to the cheeks. I'm gonna use my ColourPop blush in the shade She's In Bold. So to apply this, I am gonna use a brush. I don't really wanna use my fingers because I wanna give a really nice airbrush effect to the cheeks and I wanna make sure it's really nice and smooth. Apply that right to the apples and kind of just swirl the brush backwards towards my temples to blend it with the bronzer. So now moving on to a highlighter that is absolutely an oldie but a goodie. This is my Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal. When, when highlighting first became super popular, this was the highlighter to use. And I feel like nobody ever talks about Opal anymore. And it's so sad because this is probably one of the prettiest highlighters. Every single time I take it back out of my collection, I always question my sanity as to why I ever put it away. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and put it right on my cheekbones. It's just a highlighter that really kind of does it all. Okay, gonna zoom you guys in, let's work on the eyes. So now it's time to work on the eyes. I really wanted to do kind of like a smoky cat eye with a bronzy shade. So this guy is a caviar stick um, from Laura Mercier in the shade Burnish Bronze. I actually had this put on me by a makeup artist a couple weeks ago and I absolutely loved the color and I loved the way it looks. So I really wanted to create my own look. This is a bronze shade, but it's a very unique bronze shade. As you can see, it doesn't lean, you know, coffee or gold it leans more purple pink so this is a color you guys that is going to make every single eye color pop because it does have those slight purpley undertones so that's why I really really like this and that's why I really want to feature it because I feel like this is such a universal shade that a lot of you guys are probably going to really really like because it's going to make your eyes look insane so to really get the most out of this color i'm going to be lining my eyes completely with this going to create like a really nice grungy smoky cat eye and it's going to be the only eyeshadow that i'm going to be using i'm first going to apply it directly from the crayon onto my eye 
only kind of like on the outer corner because I could be kind of a little bit more careless in that area. But towards the inner part of my eye, I need to be a little bit more precise. And before that sets down, I'm gonna take my flat shader and I'm just gonna pull out the cream a little bit to kind of create a nice little cat eye shape and to soften the edge there. And I'm even going to pick up some more of the product from the actual pen and then apply it directly onto the eye. Then I'm going in with more product on my brush and I'm gonna go in towards the inner corner of the eye. Just to create a nice thin line there. So you could totally leave it at this and you're gonna have a really nice spin on a classic eyeliner with this really pretty color. I'm actually gonna take it to the next level though and I'm gonna bring it on my lower lash line. So just going in directly with the pencil and I'm really making sure to connect it on the outer corner of my eye. You do not want any skin showing in that area because it's gonna th really throw off the look. I'm bringing it all the way towards the inner corner. Again, going back in with my flat brush, kind of just finessing it, making sure that point of the eyeliner is still pointy. And then I'm just going in with the same brush and kind of just smoking along the lash line so that it's nice and smoky and there's no harsh lines there. I'm actually flipping the brush like this to smudge it. So I am also going to apply a color to my lower lash line so that there's no blank space there. I'm gonna be using my Persona 24 hour waterproof eye pencil. And this one is in the shade Plum. This is a perfect color for this look. It kind of mimics a similar shade to the cream that we just applied. It's a nice like purpley brown, but it is matte. So it's perfect for the waterline. So that is the complete finished eye. So now all I'm going to do is just do the same on the other side. So now that the liner is done, I'm gonna quickly apply some mascara on my upper and lower lashes. I'm gonna use my Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir. This mascara to me is so sad. <laughs> So disappointing because it actually makes my lashes look amazing, but this mascara smudges on me like really nothing else. But I know a lot of people love this and don't have any issues with it. So that's why I wanted to put it on today just so you guys can see how it makes the lashes look because it really is quite beautiful. So now it's time for the lip and I actually have two lip options for you guys from Lisa Eldridge. So excited to showcase both of these lip colors because they are both so insanely beautiful, like I cannot even emphasize it enough. This is another product that I totally fell in love with when Lisa first released her lipstick. She released kind of like a whole red collection and those red lipsticks probably still remain as one of my favorite red lip formulas out there. They're just so unreal. Her lip formula is really unlike anything else. And you can see just by looking at the lipstick bullet, that texture on the outside of the lipstick makes your lips literally look like velvet. So Lisa recently extended the collection into a collection of nudes, which was very exciting because who doesn't love a good nude lip? And I have two of them here. I have a light one called Velvet Fawn and then a deeper one called Velvet Decade. So I'm first going to line my lips with a nude liner. This is my Jouer Longwear Cream Liner in Sable. So here's Velvet Fawn. I mean, come on. This is literally the most perfect nude ever. Okay, option number one. Now let's show you guys option number two with the deeper lip. Okay, for my lip liner, I'm gonna use MAC Chestnut. It's a really nice brown. By the way, this is a chocolate brown that does have purple undertones to it as well. So it's really gonna complement the, the liner. Listen, nude is always gonna look good. Like you're never gonna go wrong with a good nude, but this lip brings this look from like here to here. Like it just brings it to the next level. And there you have the finished look. I love it so much. <laughs> so on that note, that finishes off today's look. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me create this. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. Let me know if you end up recreating this. If you do, please send me a picture on Instagram or on Twitter. I always like to retweet you guys or repost. It just always makes me so, so proud. Of course, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.